What's going on everybody here? Happy Monday to you. Another week of live racing here at Parks. It's out of the gate. Track announcer Chris Griffin here in the Parks Racing Studio. And of course, it's Cool Shirt Monday, so we gotta have the Uptown Charlie Brown shirt on. This is a custom made shirt. This has nothing to do with Bob Hutt or Uptown Charlie Brown, but I'm a big fan of that sire and all these PA breads right here in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. We got 11 races coming up on today's car. We're gonna catch up with Hall of Fame trainer John Service and talk a little bit about his career. Uh, we could have had a, about a three hour video, it seems like there, but uh, we've got a nice interview coming up a little bit later on. And we got a big carryover jackpot in the Philly Big Five, over $300,000. This is the highest it's been, the carryover jackpot. So we continue to see that jackpot climb. We'll see what happens here on this Monday. Looks very nice outside, warm up a little bit. So we're excited to have you back for some great live racing here at Parks. It's a big week too, we got 11, 12s, we got a lot of races coming your way, a lot of opportunities to make some money. Let's try and make some money here in race number one, seven furlongs, this is a pretty competitive race in here. A big scratch down towards the inside in the one. So number two, Battle of Berlin, if we see progression off of start number one, a four-year-old gelding, they paid $410,000 at the Keelan sale for Battle of Berlin. He's by Frosted. It took him some time to get to the racetrack, but that debut run was good enough. Bobby Mosco now, second time out for the barn. We'll have the rail draw, did win at seven furlongs. That's tough to do at first asking. We'll see if Battle of Berlin gets the job done. You're not gonna catch that nine to two. Price is probably gonna come down just a touch, but that's my top choice in race number one. Race number two, we're gonna go to Penny Pierce and Abner Adorno. And we'll see these connections, I think, plenty throughout the season. And we're gonna go to Vanquisher. Looks like a tough favorite in here. I guess the only thing I was wondering about was the class drop. This horse ran at a pretty good class level last time and was a decent second. We're gonna take a look at that race. A little bit of fog here as we go into that far turn, but you see Vanquisher here is gonna tip towards the outside is chasing back channel. Just was not gonna catch this horse on the front end. Back channel ran very impressively that day. Vanquisher is just gonna fade in the final 16th and not make up the ground here at four plus lengths. So uh, four year old filly by Vancouver on this class drop. She seems to be in the right spot to get the victory. She's gonna be a short price in the morning line. She's probably gonna be a short price uh, once we get closer to post time. If she runs back to this race, that should be good enough to win this in race number two. And I think she'll be a single on a lot of those early pick four tickets because she does look like a very short price favorite, but we'll see what happens with Vanquisher in today's second. We've talked about it. We've got just over 130 some subscribers. We gotta hit that 200 number now. So tell your friends, your family, hit that subscribe. Join us on YouTube right here at Parks Racing. Hit that subscribe, tell your friends. I, I, I was joking with the TV crew, like what number do you hit when it's not friends and family anymore? Because I keep telling all of my friends and family, but keep telling all of your friends and family to hit that subscribe. Let's get up to that 200, 500, get into 1,000. Lots of great content. Shout out again to the best TV crew in the business. Race number three, a mile and 70 yards, 7,500 non-two, and you take a look at this race. Gonna go towards the outside and laugh it off. Uh, I'm gonna talk with uh, Rich Perloff a little bit later on about this horse, but uh, laugh it off. A four-year-old filly, look, she's making her dirt debut. If she takes to the dirt, I think she's gonna be a standout in this race. Uh, I'll talk about this plenty on air, but Frankie Pennington, Jamie Ness, they hit it 40% last season. So this is a really good connection. When they connect, usually good things happen. Comes off of a win, drop down to five, then you claim, move up to 7,500. She's Pennsylvania bred. This adds up to a victory for me in race number three. Race number five at six furlongs, and we take a look at this race in here. Another competitive one, optional 16. Talia Ladybug has got speed. She's got to get back to her comeback effort. We're going to take a look at her speed and how she breaks out of the gate. Look, if she breaks on top and she shows some of the fractions we've seen, she can go 22, 46, open up. She faced tougher last time out. She comes back at this class level, but she only lost by a length to Shirley Green and Cartouche back on December 14th. Now this was December 1st. She's gonna run away and win this one by 11 and a half lengths. That's an extremely impressive run off the layoff. She tried a little higher class level, obviously, for Freddie Velasquez. Anthony Salgado will be a back aboard. She had a little bit of regression. She finishes third, but she just cruises up front. She's got a good draw. I think she'll show that speed. She won't have as much company up front. There's a couple class droppers in there. So gracious right next door is gonna prove tough in that race as well. But Talia Ladybug uh, on the front end, I think she'll be tough to catch and we'll see if she gets the victory there 
in today's fifth. We're going to talk about the Philly Big Five in just a moment, but first, we've got to talk a little bit more about Hall of Famer right here at Parks Racing, trainer John Service. Trainer John Service is stabled here at Parks and is also one of the most recognizable trainers in Pennsylvania horse racing. I grew up about three quarters of a mile from the racetrack in Charlestown, West Virginia. My father was a jockey, later became a head steward, and I got the bug at about age 14 and knew what I wanted to do. Well, you know, I moved here in 81, and I raised my kids here, and I got to know, you know, a lot of people in the township politically and, and you, know, fan, you know, friends and neighbors and stuff. and. Uh, and they've been good to me. I mean, you know, they've always treated me well. You know, if, if I need, if I had a problem, I needed help, I could make a phone call, and, and people would come to come to uh, to my side. John Service told us what still drives him in his career. I mean, the, the, the morning is peaceful time, it's quiet. You enjoy watching your horses train, but there's nothing like the excitement of the afternoon. You know, when the horses are running and, and the adrenaline's pumping and, and you get lucky and get an opportunity to walk into the winter circle, nothing better than that. Pennsylvania bred Smarty Jones had a huge impact on horse racing. Does John Service still get recognized to this day? Some people, some people do. I've had, it's funny because I'll have people come up to me and, and ask me if who I am or what I, you know, because they, they'll say, you look awful familiar to me. I know you from somewhere, you know, so. But and then once in a while you'll get somebody that, that remembers and knows. John Service told us a story from that historic run about Smarty Jones's owners, Roy and Patricia Chapman. They, they were they were perfect owners for me with this horse. I mean, they never questioned. I, Chappie questioned me one time, and that's probably the best story. It was right after the Arkansas Derby, and uh, the guy interviewed me, the reporter interviewed me, and asked me if Stewart was going to ride the horse in the Kentucky Derby. And, you know, he'd ridden him every time, so I said, sure, absolutely. Well, the next day, I get a phone call from Chappie, and he said, I just read where Stewart's riding this horse in the Kentucky Derby. We never talked about that. And I said to him, I said, well, Chappie, he's, you know, he's not, he hasn't done anything wrong. The horse has won every time. And he said, so you're telling me you're comfortable with him riding in his first Kentucky Derby ever in a 20-horse field? And I said, yeah. And he goes, okay, that's all I need to hear. Uh, that, was, that was pretty cool. What race is still out there for Hall of Fame trainer John Servants? I don't, I don't know if there's one specific race. Um, I'd love to win the PA Derby. I was fortunate enough to win the Cotillion already, but uh, I, I guess you know the PA Derby would probably be the one race that I'd love to put under in my resume, um, and maybe the Belmont. And the Belmont, I love how he ends that there. Thanks again to Trader John Service and his entire team as we start talking about race number seven. Let's talk about the Philly Big Five. You saw the Philly Flyer, right? As they like to call him, Smarty Jones. But the Philly Big Five, let's take a look at this carryover jackpot coming into today. $318,450.24. Remember, this is a jackpot wager in a pick five format. It's always the last five races of the day. 15% takeout with a 50 cent minimum. You can get involved in that jackpot wager on a Monday, this President's Day. You could take down the entire jackpot if you're a single ticket winner in the Philly Big Five. Let's see if we can find the winner in that first leg of the Philly Big Five. As we take a look at this first race, six and a half furlongs, it's tough. I, I handicapped this a couple different ways and I was looking at different horses because I, I think quite a few of them could win. Esperancita, I just am not sure if she's got the same class as some of these, these types, but she's won two in a row and she continues to progress. She's the one that scares me. I would include the four on that ticket. I do like the seven cause I said, cause it's second off the layoff here for the Mark Reed barn. I think this horse can improve as well. I would put all three of these on that first leg. The systemic risk, a six year old mare by into mischief, Kentucky bred. I just think that she sits in a really nice spot in this race to where she might prove to be tough. Uh, you know, for a horse that is Ernesto Pedia Preciado, Ruben Silvera, uh, she's going to be tough in here, but this is a race where you could really uh, go a little deeper in that first leg. Again, it's a jackpot bet. Get involved in that Philly Big Five. We get into race number nine, part of the sequence in here. And Jamming with Brandon, uh, I've liked this horse. I, I like Jamming with Brandon quite a bit. We're going to take a look at this last run. This horse comes flying at the end of the, at the, end of the race. Now, they were moving up front. You see a 22-1. and one, You see a 46-4. and four. Uh, this horse is showing some really, really quick fractions up front. 
this eight-year-old gelding by State Thirsty, he likes to win races. He's two for two <laughs> this year, uh, you know, off of that DQ, two starts back. So Jacinto Solis, Anthony Salgado back aboard. Jim with Brandon, I think if he shows this effort, you see him the number three there, he's going to draw away and actually win this race pretty nicely. Uh, is he going to get the same setup today? Possibly, uh, you know, that's really what it comes down to is will Jamin with Brandon have enough speed up front? And there might be. There is definitely some speed in here to where I could see a 22 45 type opening half mile and a quarter. So uh, for me, I think Jamin with Brandon sits a nice trip again. He's an improving type. Anthony Salgado, we'll see what happens there with Jamin with Brandon, but one to consider on your Philly Big Five tickets. Hey, we've got the performance of the week and we took a look back at some of the performances and I just felt like there was one race that was really standing out and this is from last week, the performance of the week. there with the performance of the week. We still got to come up with the right name for the performance of the week. We're still working on some names. Maybe you guys can tweet me at in the grandstand at Parks Racing and let me know what you think the performance of the week should be called. We got to come up with a good name for that. Put our creative minds together. Hey, we got race 11 that's going to close out the card here this afternoon. And I think again, another horse that probably ends up being a single on a lot of tickets. Uh, numbers wise, when you're taking a look at the number 11 in here, Spicer's Gold, Luis Acasio, Harold Weiner, first off the claim, they're 18%. Based off of the last race that Spicer's Gold ran, though, because this horse has front end speed, because this horse can be a little tactical as well, doesn't necessarily need the lead, uh, the run in the first turn is going to be everything here for Spicer's Gold. Uh, like I said, numbers wise, you can just take a look at it, handicap the race. It just seems like the 11 is best. It's going to have to cross over from an outside draw. But if this horse clears, I just, I'm not really quite sure who can run this horse down in the stretch. It's a horse race, you know, a mile and 70 yards when you're taking a look at a 7,500 non-winners of three lifetime, but to close out your Philly Big Five, and, and how often do we go through the jackpot bet when we look at the live money, and if you haven't seen that, we show the live money so you can see which tickets are alive uh, going into that 11th and final, but if you're taking a look at some of the horses in here, who can who can end up winning this 7,500 non-three race at this two-turn distance? Also looking at the number nine, Mikey's Jewel, Jorge Gonzalez, Jorge Diaz. Jorge Gonzalez put a nice ride on the horse last time, finished behind Connoisseur, was second beaten a length and three quarters. So as this horse was closing into it, just couldn't quite make up the same ground. It's going to close out that Philly Big Five. Let's take a look at that carryover jackpot one last time, $318,450.24. It's a jackpot bet on this President's Day. Happy President's Day to you. You could take down the entire jackpot as the single ticket winner. As always, don't forget to join us here on Out of the Gate on Mondays. We got great racing action on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We got Parks Madness coming up, so don't forget about Parks Madness. This is gonna be March 7th, 8th, and 9th. Those nominations happening, that's gonna be a great slate of racing. We change our post time next week, next Monday, 12.55. Keep that in mind as well. And don't forget on social, you can follow us on Twitter, at Parks Racing. Also, hit that subscribe on YouTube find Parks Racing for all of our great content. Enjoy all this great racing action on a Monday afternoon. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of Out of the Gate. Hit that subscribe and enjoy this week of live racing from Parks Racing. We'll see you next week on Out of the Gate.